please watch the three previous videos in the playlist before you view this particular video here. Let's have a look at this statement. First number is 2. So we can see that we have stored 2 in the first number because the program statement was first number is assigned 2. Let's have a look at the next program statement. Well here we create another variable called number copy and it is assigned what's stored in first number. Now so far this is very similar to the program that you looked at in the previous video. This has got this additional step here though, first number is 7. And you can see that the 2 that was stored in the variable first number has now been overridden by the 7 because 7 has been assigned to first number. So there's a very straightforward program that has three program statements. What we're now going to do, however, is have a look at this from the viewpoint of the execution space. Here we can see the program statements again. First number is assigned 2. And we should know by now that this will create an execution space and an object reference and an object will appear. Object reference is given the name first number and the two will be copied to the object. And of course the object reference first number will receive the location of the object in the execution space. And we say that these are now bound together. The next thing we're going to do is to have a look at this program statement here. Number copy is assigned first number. Now this will result in another object reference being created, which is shown here. And it is given the name number copy. And because it's been assigned first number, what in fact it will be assigned with is the address that's stored in first number. In other words, the object reference, i.e. the arrow as I'm representing it here. So the arrow is copied to the object reference number copy. Now this means that this will now be bound to the object that contains the two. So we can see quite clearly that these two object references, first number and number copy, are linked, are bound to the object that contains two. So they both have access to this number to stored in this integer object. Now the next program statement here is saying first number is assigned 7. Now we have to be clear as to what will happen here. And remember, we're dealing with a model of what's happening here. We're high level language programmers. What goes down at the machine code level, we could talk about, but as high level language programmers, we need a model to understand what's happening here. And that's what I'm trying to introduce with this notion of execution space. Well, what will happen an object will be created, a different object, and this object will receive the 7. Now, that object's been created, and we can see it was done by the program statement first number equals 7. So that particular program statement will result in the first number object reference receiving the address of the object that contains 7 which I'm demonstrating here. Now consequently, the object reference first number can no longer be bound to the object containing 2 because it no longer has the arrow pointing to it. It no longer has the location. So what we have to show now is that that binding is gone. Of course, the reason for that is this is now bound to the 7. So what we can see now is that we have two objects in the computer's memory. First number is pointing to the object that has 7. It was pointing to the object that contained 2 right at the very beginning of the small program we're looking at here. But it no longer does. It points to a completely different object. Now we said in a previous video that when an object reference was removed from an object, that object would be garbage collected. Now is this one garbage collected because it lost the binding to the object reference first number? Well the answer is clearly no. The reason being it is now bound to the object reference number copy by this line as we can see here. So this particular object is not garbage collected because although it lost its original object reference it's got another one now. And that's what the Python language looks for. It looks to see if there are any objects in the execution space that are by themselves. And by that I mean don't have an object reference bound to it. Now you have a choice here when you consider this simple program. Should you go with the simple model that I've been talking about or should you go with this one? Well, as I recommended in previous videos, you should really get a handle on both. So you've got a choice of looking at this one 
or in fact this one here which we looked at right at the very beginning of this particular video check out the supporting website for these videos and consider subscribing to the youtube channel and you'll get an automatic update every time i upload a new video on python